What's up, guys? This is Adi again, Gate 7 International, for the seventh deep dive of the summer. That's right. We've had now seven signings coming in, including the young man we are going to be talking about today, Santiago Jeze from Huracan in Argentina. But before we get on to the deep dive and discussion about the player, as always, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Help us continue to grow the community. It grows more and more and more, especially during these summer months when transfers are hot and signings are coming in. And don't forget to support us on Patreon as well. If you want to get early access to these scouting reports before the player is announced, all of that is released ahead of time when we know a player is coming. The scouting reports get done. They're put on to Patreon. You're able to see them before they go live on YouTube. You even might be able to see some scouting reports for players that end up not coming. So a little bit of extra stuff there. And don't forget, you get extra content uh, if you are in the $5 a month tier, in addition to early access for Patreon, as well as access to our WhatsApp group. So without further ado, everybody, we have the scouting report for Santiago has a defensive midfielder. 21 years old Argentinian midfielder that is coming from Huracan, the club that is based in the Argentinian first division. Uh, he uh, Santiago is a right footed defensive midfielder. He has also played as an attacking midfielder and, and more as like a box to box eight or box to box midfielder as well. Uh, he sits at about five foot 10, 177 centimeters, decent build. 72 kilogram, 158 pounds, so he's pretty lean as well. He's spent so far his entire professional career at Huracan in their system uh, until he got promoted into the first team. He was in the B team at first, then he made his way into the first team, and then eventually he became a captain at the age of 21. Incredible stuff for any young man of his age. And it turns out that this is going to be the first player that we bring in a fee for. So some of the rumors online that we have seen with Argentinian media is that the the offer was around the 5 million mark for about 80% of his rights. We'll get more clarity on that at the time of recording. That seems to be the only info we have so far. So, But of course, as always, when he's announced any information that we get, we will share with you. Now, quick profile of the player himself. Very technical ball carrier. Uh, quick turn and change of direction when he does have the ball. His control is not the tightest, but his understanding of of his limits with in terms of his touch and where the ball is going to be is, is very admirable. And he, he had enough times where he was dribbling the ball, going at players, and caught them off guard enough times to where it's not a mistake. Uh, his ball control maybe may not be as as close to him as as some other people, where it's like right on, very low center of gravity, but he he seems to have the knowledge of what his capabilities are and is 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 quite good moving the ball around and 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 keeping possession and uh moving away from attackers that are trying to get it from him covers a ton of ground too guys i mean this is a pattern with a lot of the players that uh cordon and diego martinez have brought in i mean offense and defense this guy moves and runs constantly but his most important quality, which we'll get into, is his defensive ability and his protective capabilities when on defense and covering the defensive line. A lot of you guys that I've seen on social media have discussed this player as an Inbom Huang replacement or a Mari Kamara replacement because both of those players, well, Huang, of course, we know the 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 drama going on there. And then there's there was the Fabrizio Romano post about... Madi getting looked at by a lot of clubs. So my goal here is to explain whether or not that's true. Is Santiago Jeze a replacement for either of these players? Well, let's take a look. Let's start, as we always do, with some data. We're going to take a look at the data profile for Jeze and all three aspects that we go through now in, in these deep dives. And we're going to start with goal threat. No surprise almost non-existent. Uh, he he does get some looks in front of goal. You can see his his XG isn't horrible. His XG is actually pretty good. So he does get some opportunities uh, in, in in front of goal and around. But he 
he ha- he used to take some penalties at Oracon, but then outside of those penalties, all of his shots came off of uh, set pieces or from distance outside of the penalty area, maybe 20, 25 meters out. So that could the penalties could account for a, a large portion of that XG per 90 because penalties count for very high. It's like 0.76 uh, XG. So that could account for why his XG figure is actually pretty decent. But I didn't see a lot in terms of his goal scoring prowess or offensive set piece ability, uh, at least to where I think it's going to be a consistent factor for us. Never saw also a lot in the penalty area regarding shot creation. Uh, most that he did, most of the reason why we don't see that is because he played a lot deeper. Like I said, he he's played as a defensive mid a lot for, in Argentina. So he's sitting deeper. He's not getting quite as many touches in the opponent penalty area. Um, but he does move the ball quickly. So when, when you do see him in those elevated positions or he's in the penalty area, he can slip past the defender. He can make things happen in the penalty area. We we see him being able to play the ball, somebody next to him, give them a shot here and there. But again, we really only get glimpses of his capability in the advanced uh, areas because he plays so deep most of the time. Most of his shot assists, actually, they came off the back of interceptions, such as, you, you know, he's he's playing the second ball, wins the ball off of an errant pass, or wins the ball off of, playing somebody and and winning it in one of those defensive duels. And then he crosses it in and creates some shop opportunities for his teammates that way. And those interceptions we're going to touch on later, but that was really the core context for how he was creating shots. Not because he was super involved in the run of play, getting forward and getting in those advanced areas, but because he was pressed high, winning the ball back and then creating those opportunities as a result so don't expect a whole lot from him in 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 the final third we'll say scoring goals or creating a whole lot of assists but he will definitely be a factor especially in the high press winning the ball back for us and kind of creating those initial opportunities that lead to those goals so up next we have the possession so if you're looking on the chart the build up possession section is in the very top part of the chart and one of the reasons we're bringing this player in is because of his ability to be incredibly involved in build up and at 21 years old he does not shy away from the ball once the ball pivotal getting it forward constantly moving into space asking for the ball connecting between the midfield and forward line the defensive and the midfield line more than capable of one two touch passing and moving he's another player that seems like he can run all day. Yet another pattern we see with the Diego Martinez and Cordon signings that are coming in. Whether he's carrying the ball forward or playing the ball to the wings or the 10, you're just going to see him involved. If he's on the field, he's going to get involved in all of these different facets of play. Now, his pass accuracy, as you can see on the chart here, it does leave a little bit to be desired. But look, he's 21. He has plenty of time to improve. And I'll be honest, a lot of the giveaways I saw, they occurred when he was receiving the ball in pressure. So he's getting doubled down, tripled down sometimes, losing the ball, maybe trying to quickly get rid of the ball, not completely aware of his surroundings. But this is something that as he gets older, this is going to to develop better his awareness of himself on the field. I'm not worried about it, to be honest with you, because I honestly believe in Greece. We're going to see his possession numbers, his accuracy, and his the the completions go up because teams are not going to be pressing us. He is going to be afforded a little bit more time to play the ball, and I think we're going to see, especially in these teams that are not Ike, for example, will he'll have plenty of time to release the ball. They're going to be playing low blocks deeper defensive uh, schemes. So I also believe he's a European capable player at 21 years old. It's a little bit bold of me to say there will be a transition time, but if you guys saw what I saw in the film, I mean, he's, this kid is the real deal. This, he is not a joke. This is, this is a solid player we're getting, maybe not in the, the same way that you expect the BAM to be, but this kid is, this kid is a, is a quality player. So up next, we're going to talk about the the defensive traits, which is the real reason why we brought this player in. If you look at that middle section where it says defensive, these are the traits and uh, 
comparing him to every other center mid and defensive mid in the Argentinian first division, how he does. And while Ibora is a veteran bulldog in the midfield, Hesse represents in some ways, and I don't mean to be too bold saying this, a younger version of Stoltidis. He's a midfield general for Huracan. In the same way, Stoltidis was a general for us. Maybe it's bold to say, but it, it I got those vibes when I was watching this kid play. His ability to read the game defensively is astonishing. And Stoltidis as well was a pretty good ball winner. Incredibly high interception rate. I mean, guys, look at his interceptions per 90. I mean, he's almost in the 90th percentile. He was one, one of the, the highest. And by the way, there were a lot of midfielders that had over 1,000 minutes in the Argentinian league, over 100 of them. So that tells you something also. His, uh, it's, it's not a coincidence also, just like the, the rate, the number of times, the, 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 the situations he gets in. His positioning is stellar. He always seems to be in the right place at the right time whether it's recovering a second ball or cutting the pass, maybe maybe that has to do a little bit more with his understanding of his teammates around him. So maybe we won't see that right away for Lubiakos until he gets to, to gel with his team. But the some of the patterns that I saw while watching, he likes to sit defensively in front of that defensive line, kind of float around it, just in front of them, behind the midfield, his midfield partner or partners. Very aggressive closing down players as well. And surprisingly, isn't drawing as many fouls as I would expect. Some of these defenders like Ibora, we saw. I mean, he drew a lot of fouls. But when you see fouls committed, 80th percentile, which means he's barely drawing any fouls. Um, it's This is uh, good stuff that you like to see. Something else that surprised me was his aerial ability. I mean, you know, 5'10", okay, he's not short, but... He's, he's not as tall as some of these guys that are over six foot. I didn't expect him to be that good in the air, but surprisingly, his his aerial wind volume is pretty good, especially compared to other midfields in Argentina. So, I mean, his his physique combined with his wits, he's able to to really kind of muscle himself around, assert himself, and, and that plus his smarts can – See him win these balls, these aerial duels. It's, it's, it's remarkable. But the these are the traits that really we are looking for. And, and what we know now about Diego Martinez, the the work that he wants his players to put in, not just on the ball but off the ball. It's no surprise that a player like this kid has a, has caught the attention of somebody like Cordon or Diego Martinez. Now, up next is a very important comparison I have for you. As I mentioned earlier, I was going to explain to you guys why he is or is not a, a comparable replacement to Huang. We talked about the recent drama a little bit earlier. Huang is surely on his way out. Is this guy a replacement for Inbom Huang? The answer is no, he's not. Unfortunately, he is not a replacement for Mbom Huang. We will need another player if we are looking for somebody to replace the creative ability of Mbom Huang and Mahdi. Hesse is a different mold. And you can see in the radar chart here, there are some distinct differences. Hesse is ahead of Huang in penalty area actions, overall defensive capabilities, Huang has some similar progressive action output, like the, whether it's carrying the ball forward or passing the ball forward, but he is more pivotal in the offensive side of things. Huang does a lot more in the final third. He also is more involved with the ball. Now, this could be just a scale thing because of how Olympiacos was and how bad the league was and, and, and how poor we were. So that's something to, to bear in mind. But Huang, from what I can see, his deep lying as a playmaker does a lot more than Heze does. But the value proposition here, I mean, Huang is a more offensive guy and Heze is more of a defensive guy. Not that he doesn't have some of those offensive capabilities. I don't want you guys to think that I think this 
this that has as anything less than a gem. He's not. He's 21. His game's still going to evolve. He's a great player, but he's just a different mold than either Mahdi or Huang. We still need to find that deep line playmaker for this squad if we're going to lose both of them. But this kid with his intense defensive ability, relentless nonstop running, I mean, this is going to be a real asset for a club, somebody with very high future resale value. So all that being said, looking at the comparison to Wong, looking at the data, the, 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 the player's profile, what is my verdict? Well, guys, I'm very positive on a player. This, this is a two thumbs up from me. I like him. I mean, the reported fee is high, so it does represent a pretty high risk for us. Mounds of potential, though, and larger clubs in Europe have been looking at him. There were there were rumors about 8 million euro offers for him from clubs like Anderlecht and from, from other clubs in Europe. I mean, we can't rely on the likes of Bukhalakis to anchor the midfield and protect the back line behind a 35-year-old Ibora. We need a future at this position. We need a, a, a person that has potential. Do I wish it was Sorlis? Yes. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be the case. We know it's not Bukalakis. And this kid has all the makings to be what we're looking for. One of a kind vision on the defensive end of the ball. Constantly disrupting opponents in their play. Getting forward and also making himself very useful in possession. This is another bit of great business by Cordon. Great business, as has the business has been done the rest of the summer. We've already seen the type of business. Kini has already proved himself and done very well, even as a, a, an interim left-back player for, for Libyakos, while we haven't signed a full-time left-back yet. We also are looking at uh, Ibora, who's done very well, surprisingly for his age, and shut the haters up, so... This is a kid with tremendous resale value, and I think he's just going to be yet another solid signing for us and for Olympiacos this season. Well, guys, I hope I was able to enlighten you a little bit on the player. I hope I was able to give you guys some insight maybe that you didn't have before for those of you that don't follow the Argentinian League. Any questions, as always, feel free to hit me up on social media. You know where to find me. I'm everywhere. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. DM the pod account. Doesn't matter. You have questions. I love to answer. I love your engagement. So yet another deep dive is done. Number seven, and there's more to come, guys. So if you like the scouting reports, there's going to be more that we're hitting with hitting you guys with. So enjoy it. This is Gate 7 International by the fans for the fans, and we will see you next.